So good morning, everyone. It's really challenging to be the last presenter before lunch, you know. And it's such an honor to be here presenting in the 50th WCARS meeting. I want to thank Professor Miklos, Professor Ellis, and Barbara for arranging this event and letting us present our early stage um, project in here. Um, so today I'm going to present our COVID project should schools reopen. So this project is a flash of weight from one of our um, group members and the link this COVID pandemic with the real life experiences. And uh, uh, we do realize that uh, the COVID-19 pandemics is causing uh, unpredicted uh, disruption to the education system. So we started with this project by the briefly research based on the understanding that the local high school have the problem of the low capacities and high enrollment. For instance, the schools in J.P. Stevens High School in Addison, they have way more enrollment than recommended level of uh, the enrollment accordingly. So this is leading to the, our research questions, right? With the oversized enrollment, the school opened without proper measurement of the social distancing. Should the school reopen? So before we move on to the other part, I want to share some key figures that would affect dramatically about how we see the pandemic and the school reopen scenarios. The first number was, according to the American Academy of Pet, uh, Pediatric and Children's Hospital Associations, there are 853,635 so, uh, 853, total COVID-19 cases reported. And children represent 11% of the total COVID cases. This number was 2.3% back to the April. There are 81,447 new child COVID cases reported during the past week from October 22 to October 29. So despite the fact that the child cases and the patient rate is increasing. And the school self-reported many outbreak cases. Some research shift from the discussion of risk of opening K-12 schools to the risk of keeping them closed. Of course, there are many factors influence uh, and there are many consequences because of the school close, such as learning loss, less interaction with peers, those factors we should cut in when we consider the school uh, reopen or not. But on the other hand, uh, in the early, we talk about the, the children really get COVID, which is proved to be uh, not true. So it brought a lot of challenges to teachers to conduct online teaching. Of course, uh, parents did not have a very good time. Uh, consider they spent 24 hours with their kids and they probably gonna help them with like second grade math or uh, artwork at home, right? So I think uh, the audiences all have similar experiences during the pandemic and deal with those issues, right? It's very close to our life. But U.S. Uh, made a very little progress in towards practicing uh, that would allow the school to make uh, reopen safer, such as uh, the measures of rapid and uh, regular testing to contact the tracking to identify the sources of, of, of the outbreaks to reporting school associated cases publicly, regularly, and constantly. These are all, all the concerns and leading to what we do with our project. 
there is a continuous uncertainty about the degree to which school children are susceptible and uh, able to transmit the COVID-19. Some researchers outline the key principles for reporting schools, which we want to use uh, in our paper as well as a guidance. So one study from the United Kingdom using a module that uh, predict simulate six different scenarios representing the combination of two school open strategies and three testing scenarios. The result shows that the safe opening of school must be accompanied by large scale population wide testing of symptomatic individuals and effect tracking their context, following by the isolation of diagnosed individuals. So to open schools, reopen schools safely, school districts are encouraged to provide facilities of ventilations, air filtrations, and regular, regular hand washing, and provide space for physical distancing. Implement all those strategies are costly and create many practical challenges. So some researchers suggest educational setting can remain open, but by providing certain um, protection and measures such as contact tracking, quarantine, even school closure. Here is a list of the risk factor that the CDC of the US published in their website. And we will run our model using this benchmark as the answer to the research question, whether schools should reopen. So we collected data from multiple sources. The first data set is from National Education Association. This data set have some potential flaws because uh, it's a self-reported data set and all the schools in the U U United States are participate. They collect the data from the cases among students, staff, and faculties. The highlight of this database is that it, they include the schools if they have quarantine policy or not. So as we see from the chart, in California and Massachusetts, most of the school have quarantine policy. For Florida and New Jersey, only one third of the school district have quarantine policy. So in the last, New York and Texas have very small proportions of school have the po quarantine policy placed. So in this study, even though we have the all state data from the NEA school data, database, but we only select six days because uh, we don't have enough time to do all the data pre-processing for the research. So let's move on to the preliminary result. So then in this, I include all the total cases distributed among the six states. Uh, we using the information of the school district to try to locate it uh, different location with their case numbers. So let's take a closer look uh, to this. So from the instance of the COVID cases and the severeness of the same school districts, Florida is clearly the hotspot of COVID-19 cases. And we will recommend the Florida to implement uh, school closure policies. And now we will break down the cases into the different groups, staff, student, and undefined. This number is very straightforward, break down by the cases and correspond with the numbers of the deaths of the group as well. So next we will move on how many schools are literally do the self-reporting on the COVID cases. So we know that the numbers is vary and we do understand that some states have more school districts than others. For instance, New Jersey have 598 school districts, even 
despite the fact that we are not very big area in the United States. So move to the next part, like we will talk about the uh, school closure policies that being placed in different states. So when we look at into that uh, data and we find the only full closure area in the United States is Washington DC. So they still order full school, uh, full school closures in Washington DC, but most of the state doesn't have any order regarding to the school uh, closure. And five states are ordered to reopen. Those five states are uh, California, uh, ta hmm. I'm not really familiar with the US map. <laughs> and North Carolina, I think, uh, is also one of them. So move on to next part. We have uh, the data represent the cases per 100,000 children versus the percentage of children who is COVID patient, right? So currently we have average child cases in the nation around 11%. So in this chart, how we interpret it, we can find the cases uh, per 100,000 children. If the number is higher than 11,000, uh, it means, uh, no, 1,100, it means that the state should have some correspond policy and action towards the school reopen policy. So let's look closer to the six selected states. What draw my attention again is Florida. It's clear that the percentage of children COVID patient rate is very low, but the case per 100,000 is very high. Consider the percentage of children populations of total population rate is fairly low in Florida. This might indicate the situation might worse than we thought. So the policymakers should pay attention to those uh, high incident school districts and try to implement the school closure policy. As our project is in the very early stage, we would like to talk about the future plan. First, we would like to expand the data to the, all the states in the US, and then we want to consider the basic and the demographic information about the local school districts, such as enrollment area, facilities for ventilation, uh, filtration, and regular uh, hand washing, all those perspectives. In addition, we would expect the budget changes among school districts that target on the actions towards COVID-19. Another step that would be nice if we can separate the children patient into different age group, as now we only have the, all the data from age zero to 19, probably some states from zero to 17. But if we can break the age group, that would be very meaningful for us to look into those because we are cover the grade from K to 12. And uh, we will also want to have a database that uh, have a collective information about school reopen risk assessment. And we will come up with a prediction model as a final result, uh, final uh, research section result for uh, school reopen, and we will consider the policy and the impact of COVID-19 into this model. And that will be the unique cases uh, of our study. So this is all, all my presentation. I am uh, very welcome for any question that regarding to my presentation.